Here we are at part three of the Savage Impulse Rebarrel Project. Uh, today I'm going to be setting the headspace. So there's a few challenges when you're setting headspace on, on this action. Um, similar to setting headspace on any barrel nut type system. But basically <clears throat> you have to have a way to keep the action from moving also keep the barrel from moving so that when you tighten the barrel nut only the barrel nut is moving and tightening so what I did is I just uh, clamped the action in my vise these are wood blocks so it shouldn't really mar the uh, the finish at all and I used my homemade barrel vise on the barrel, in this case using just a C-clamp to keep it tight there. And of course I've on the inside again I roughed it up and I used a little brown sugar for some extra grip. As we saw in the last, uh, in part two of this series. I do have an action wrench, which is normally what you would use to hold on to the action. Um, but it's, it's made for rounded actions like your, stav your standard Savage 10 model or Remington 700. Uh, the Impulse, of course, is a little different. You can see that, I mean, for one thing, it has an integrated rail. And it has a flat bottom. So that, that type of action wrench just isn't going to work. So this is what I came up with. And it seemed like it's going to work. So now let's talk about headspace gauges a little bit. Um... Well, for one thing, I haven't talked about this much, but this new barrel that I'm putting on is chambered in 22 Creedmoor. And there's not really um, a whole lot of factory ammo options out there. Uh, for me personally, I've, I've reloaded everything that I shoot for the last, I don't know, five or six years. So I'm not that interested in shooting factory ammo anyway. But it is part of the conversation when you when you talk about setting headspace because you do want your headspace to be at a minimum, but also um, you need enough tolerance in there so that you can shoot, you could possibly shoot a, a variety of, of ammo. So just taking a look at a couple of measurements here. Here I got my um, Hornaday Headspace Comparator Gauge. This is the D400 that I use on the Creedmoor uh, cases. And really, I'm just comparing um, measurements here. So here's my Go, go Gauge, 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, we'll just take a look at that. 1.533. I do have a No-Go Gauge. Um, this one is 1.54, so I'm looking about six thousandths uh, difference between the two, which is a little bit more than, than I'd like. I'd like a little bit tighter tolerance than, than that. Um, this is the brass I'm going to be shooting, alpha brass. Uh, well, there we go. 22 Creedmoor Alpha Brass. If I measure this, I get 1.533, 32, 325, somewhere in there. And again, this is my go gauge. So my brass, and I measured several of those pieces, they're really consistent. Um, my brass is only about a thousandth or so shorter than my go gauge. Um, that's measuring the on the shoulder with the comparator. So that's going to be nice and tight in there if I set it, if I set my headspace to the go gauge. So that's what I'm going to do. And back to the setup a little bit here. I, as you can see, I already have, um, well, I have the receiver extension in there um, I guess I could show you what that looks like 
This is a receiver extension. That's already sitting in there. It's clamped into the receiver with these uh, screws here. I have my recoil lug on there and my barrel nut. And you saw in part two, I had to add some additional threads to this barrel so that I could get my barrel nut out far enough so that I can actually uh, get the barrel spun on there into the receiver or, or the barrel extension far enough so that uh, I can get minimal headspace. So, um, oh, also what I have in there is use some nickel anises just on the threads of the barrel. I'll just so that and whenever I get this barrel shot out and I need to replace it with the other one that I have, uh, I should be able to get it off there without too much trouble. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do here. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Maybe. Okay, so I'm going to be putting the go gauge in there. And I'm going to put the bolt in the battery. And uh, this particular bolt, I'll take it out. This particular bolt um, does not have like a spring-loaded ejector. It has uh, kind of a mechanical ejector inside the action, so we don't have to worry about taking that out. Um, the go gauge will just clip right inside there and shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to put my go gauge in, put the bolt in, I'm going to put my go gauge in the barrel, and put the bolt home. And this is kind of hard to tell. It's definitely harder to tell on this uh, straight pull than um, than like your standard bolt action. But this bolt handle needs to come not just here, but all the way forward. That's when the bolt is actually locked in the battery. So that's going to be important when I'm checking with like a no-go gauge. And all I'm going to do is I'm spinning this barrel. I'm just moving it here. And I'm just this a little bit. And I'm spinning this barrel down until the barrel hits the go gauge, which is right about well, there. It just comes to a stop. You don't want to push on it too hard. You might dent something, maybe um, affecting your headspace, but. Just right there. So that's where that's where I'm right on the go gauge. If I pull this out, what I'm gonna use instead of well there. We'll we'll try it anyway. Here's a no-go gauge. Put that in there. And if we come back around, look at the bolt handle. I can get it this position but I cannot lock the bolt in the battery so we can tell that it won't close on the no-go gauge but I want I want to be a little bit tighter than that so on my go gauge again what I'm using and there's all different methods to this but um, I'm just using this tape and I put I already have it. I already have it made. Um, I just put a circle. I, I put the tape on the back of the go gauge and put it on there, right? I put a piece of tape and then I cut around it. This looks like it actually could be, be trimmed up a little bit, but just put the tape on there and then I'm gonna cut around it with this very sharp knife and that way we have a piece of tape that is exactly the size of the base of the go gauge now this tape i already measured it it's about two and a half thousandths so what i'm looking for here is i'm going to put this in bolt home and as you can see I still cannot close it so 
this is kind of my uh, my own custom no-go gauge where it's set to instead of a difference of six thousands that I get between the go gauge and this no-go gauge I have a difference of only two and a half thousands between the go gauge and custom go gauge using the piece of tape so let me get that off there again so I can see that where I'm at right now is going to be pretty good for headspace closes on the go gauge does not close on the no go gauge pretty standard so what I want to do is just tighten this thing down now um, my particular barrel nut has wrench flats on it. I could have gotten probably a, um, like a crow foot style, uh, wrench to put on there and use, uh, use an actual torque wrench, but I'm just going to use this guy because once I put this thing on there, I'm not going to take it off until I'm swapping barrels, in which case it doesn't matter if I can set the headspace exactly the same as it was before. And um, really, as long as you get it good and tight without, you know, really hamming on it, there's a pretty wide range of acceptable um, torque values for, um, for torquing down a barrel nut. So maybe not able to see but I'm just holding on to this clamp here so that my barrel doesn't turn while I do this and I'm just tightening it down with this adjustable wrench until I get it good and tight that's pretty good right there and you know without like a cheater bar or something on it it's probably a little bit difficult to get this over tight with you know this length of a wrench anyway so there i tighten it down pretty good and my barrel appears to still be in the same position so let's check it out back up here a little bit i'm just going to let's see find my go gauge this is go let's put that back in there bolt home you can see that my bolt handle is all the way forward I guess I could fire it through and unlock it that way but I can get my bolt handle all the way forward in the battery so now I'm just going to pull this back out put my nice little piece of tape back on here again that down flat I need to cut a new piece of tape probably should anyway but try this you can see maybe now you can see I got I can get it in there but again I cannot get this bolt handle in the battery so that is going to be proper headspace. We can check it again. Just the go gauge. Get a piece of tape off of there. You can see I can get my bolt all the way forward, bolt handle. And just for the heck of it, you know, we'll just try a piece of brass. Put my piece of brass in there. No problem. So there we go. I've set it to minimal headspace. Only about, well, right at the go gauge. And you can see that two and a half thousandths, more than that, isn't going to work. So what I should get out of that is minimal expansion of this brass. When I, when I fire this piece, it should only should only expand forward in the shoulder area maybe a 
thousandth or two. And that'll should add to the life of my brass. Should be good for um, accuracy, precision. So I'm going to get this thing out of here. Get it back into my stock, which is laying over there. Get a scope on it. And load up some ammo and I'm going to go see how it shoots. <laughs> 